Prelude, Months of Howling, Year 2. It was a private room and had no like in all the known world. The decor was dark and dreary and spoke of days spent indoors with duct-taped windows and metal shutters as constant companions. That was all in his mind, of course. In reality it was just a box-standard, if slightly demonic, message board he had set up for his own, personal use. Here, Dark Lord Dennis could archive all the things he had grown to hate that particular day, and dismiss them. Normal humans, and quite a few demons, for that matter, might be unnerved by just how visceral Dennis' reactions to things were, a rebooted program that failed to meet his exacting standards might be torn to shreds, the cast and crew excoriated, and the fuel used to fan countless angry rants down the road. But, the Dark Lord's Hell Hall, as the scrolling marquee at the top currently read, had been empty for some amount of time. Even avoiding work and helping Lorelei with her weird arts and crafts witchery or whatever it was supposed to be, Dennis hadn't had the time to post his five minutes hate, nor find a reliable connection. So he was glad as they left the strange underground village those freaks had set up, because the infernal networking here was strong, and as cold as it was, the thought of getting a chance to sink his teeth into a biting review of Lorelei's wasting valuable time doing some magic thing to that kid was all the warmth he needed to keep on trucking. He was glad and shocked. Because in his absence, someone had posted into user sidebar Dennis had set up so that he could create multiple accounts and pretend to be other people. He didn't know the reasoning he had for it, only that sometimes, it made him feel better, but thinking too much about was the sort of thing cripple witches would do. Still. I think Kewen. Kewen. Blood Reaver Dance Troop was really cute. Even putting aside the fact he had never described his highbrow entertainment of choice as merely cute, the Dark Lord knew he hadn't posted recently. He read the message aloud again, and squinted out from under his glasses. What are you looking at, Dennis? Lorelei had been watching the wind outside. It was picking up with the changes of the season, he guessed. It had gotten a little less cold, but only barely. She seemed to be looking for something maybe trying to figure out their pace by how the stars above. He didn't know or care to know, but he knew that they had run out of the supplies from that underground village, and that she, which was to say, that creepy green witch, hadn't been around. Things should have been getting tense, but Lorelei seemed determined to track down that equally creepy demonologist guy, and as for Dennis. Dennis had been feeling even less of anything, as of late. It's nothing a girl like you would be interested in. It's just me stuff. Dennis tried to move his shoulders in the way of Lorelei's gaze, but she was faster at the helm of her wheelchair than he was in shuffling around in the cold weather. Still, it wasn't as if he had anything to hide from her, it was just an old habit. Not that he wanted her getting up in his personal business, but... Oh, you've got a lot of friends. Wow. Lorelei must have been reading the fake posts he had made, and Dennis felt a weird mixture of pride and hollowness. Smirking, he muttered something that might have been you better believe it but it sounded weird and stuttery and got lost on the wind. Is it that last one, right here? She jabbed a finger at the screen which was harmful to the brick and its longevity, but of course she wouldn't know the first thing about high-tech demonogagetology. Dennis rubbed his cheek and gave a curt nod. Yeah. It's not a big deal, let's just keep going. Lorelai looked as if she wanted to ask more, but he yanked the brick back and immediately typed a quick reply, to make it look as if this sort of thing happened more often than he could imagine. K, K, B, D, T, W, Z, a travesty. D, N, T, belef me try, uching it B, A, K, 2, B, A, K, with B, D, T, and try not to barf. Pleased, Dennis stowed the brick in some dark compartment with a grunt, and tried to ignore the fact that Lorelei looked as if she was going to laugh at him. Why was everybody always laughing at him, anyway? They'd get theirs, one day. They would. He had forgotten about the incident as they crossed crackling, dry ice as transparent as glass. Long sheets of the stuff that would have been impassable without magic. Mildred's spells had continued to hold even though she had been gone so at least they could make progress. But whatever Lorelei had done, it hadn't seemed to be true magic. He hadn't felt the weird pull that demons could sometimes feel, that twinge that indicated someone was missing with things they shouldn't be. Still, 
she seemed happy enough, and that was good. Not that he cared or anything, but if she felt good he could feel good too and keep her from trying to engage with him. The brick buzzed from where it had semi-fused to his skin. No. My brother bought me Blood Reaver Dance Troop without knowing what it was. Then he saw it and said it belonged in the trash. Oh. I feel really bad. WHTLS ear. His fingers flew as he typed an appropriate response. And to his surprise, the mysterious Enigma's response was just as quick. Bro is the best. He's really smart, so if he doesn't like Blood Reaver Dance Troop, I don't like it, either. But I don't think Bro likes Kyun Kyun either. Dennis hesitated, then took his time typing. Who are you? This is a closed area. Nobody else is allowed. I'm a kid. Oh, my name's Naki. I saw all the people talking and I wanted to join in. Biting back the first response he wanted to write, Dennis tried delicately to shoo the child off, knowing full well that it couldn't be a child because children didn't use the interweb. But, for whatever reason, he decided to tolerate this interloper. Whatever dude. You can stay around. If you want I can send you BDT. Oh I'm not a dude. I'm a girl. Dennis bit back a saliva-accentuated laugh, which was harder than it looked, as typing away while walking had caused him to trip over a log that had been near entirely buried beneath the ice. His face planted in the cold, but he still couldn't stop feeling like he'd laugh. Just who did this guy take him for? Well, whatever. They needed to understand how terrible their taste was, and pronto. He would be their tutor. Their dark tutor. Dark Tutor Dennis It sounded kind of cool. Yeah. As the next couple of days progressed, Naki kept asking about everything he had ever watched. She seemed interested in everything, and always took what he said completely literally. To his surprise, Dennis started rambling about any series that had ever caught his eye, explaining the deep and metaphorical symbolism when Blood Reaver's second GF had turned into a pillar of swans. Naki believed it all with the patient gullibility of a kid. Dennis was starting to feel a little unpleasant about the whole thing, not because he minded an acolyte, of course, but because, well... She genuinely believed him. It was too easy, he could recommend the worst, most poorly drawn piece of trash that wasn't ironically terrible, and she'd watch it. She might not like it, and tell him as such, but she'd do so in this cautious, jittery way that made him feel bad for putting her through it. Which meant that eventually, he stopped sharing trash tunes with her. It wasn't funny anymore, and he had started to feel weird about it. And at some point, at some point, he started talking to her about the island. Just how much he hated it here, but how it was a different kind of hate than the boring day-to-day -day hate he had felt back home. Here. Everything seemed like it was one step away from wanting to kill you, and even when things were going good. Oh. I'm really sorry. Do you think it would be better if you tried to have fun? Her messages spun into the side chat. He had noticed it about the same time he had noticed that she had started to copy his distinct online mannerisms. Part of him really wanted her to stop doing that. But like always, he made a point not to listen to that part of him. It wasn't good for anything, anyhow. And thing doing. HAV to think about survival a lot without me lame lay would be so ded, ha ha. You talk about her a lot? Do you really hate her? Dennis risked a glance over at Lorelei. Night had set in again, and she was doing that weird thing under the stars. She looked. Happy, even though they were cold and miserable and rationing food. She had said she was used to it, but he wasn't, so, he hated that. Yes. He hated that very much. His fingers hesitated over the keyboard, but Naki had already sent a follow-up string. Well I think you should not give up on her. She is depending on you. My big bro would do anything for me, and I'm going to grow up to be cool like he is. 
I think you're really cool, too, Dennis. Even if she's super mean to you, don't lose hope. It was cold. Not just the weather. He was cold. Dennis pulled his hands around him, and tried to rest his head against his hands, and placed the phone down. Then he picked it up, like he was going to type. And didn't. He bit his lip and gnashed his teeth and paced around a little bit, but still the messages didn't disappear. It came suddenly. No Naki I am not cool. I've been feeding you bull. Lorelai isn't mean to me she is really nice. When she is snippy it is BC I am hard to deal with. You should go away. I lost hope a long time ago. His fingers hung over the transmit message button. A grinning icon of his own face with badly superimposed fire behind it. Then he deleted the message, character by character. What Dennis sent instead, was. Tch like you know what you're talking about. Your big bro doesn't care about you BC if he did he would have made sure you didn't waste team online. Stop pretending to be cute. It's garbage. No one cares. Just go bother someone else. Naki didn't respond again, for a long time. Where the forest gave way to the jungle proper was clear even in this horrible weather. Frosted flower corpses that looked as if someone had pressed stained glass into floral form were everywhere, and it felt a bit more humid. Perhaps because of the seasons changing, perhaps because of the looming darkness. Once, it had been possible to escape the enclosing canopies, but ahead of them. The distant sound of large birds, distorted by distance, haunted them. Lorelei rested with her hands against her legs, expression determined. She shot him that same, determined look. And it flipped into a smile. He wished she'd go away. I think, I think we're going to make it. Do you have any advice for if we have to, if we have to fight him? I don't want to, but I think. I just have this feeling. Nothing you would need to know. He's just an old fart. Sweep the legs. Despite the fact he had meant the comment to be biting, she found it incredibly funny in that unpredictable way she had, where she'd laugh for a few moments, and then laugh some more, as if having flipped the joke over and seen it from a whole new light. You're really feeling it, aren't you, Dennis? If you're worried about me, don't be. I know we can do this. We have to, I think. Maybe Mildred hasn't come back because this is some kind of test, and it's to draw out my powers? That sounds like the sort of thing she'd do. He nearly flipped his lid, started shouting at her like the first times they had talked. But he was too exhausted now, too broken away and chipped away at by the stupid little thing called friendship. It made you weak, he thought. He wished very much he could stop it. Lorelei was blinking, putting two and two together, she was stupid bright, that way. Another thing he wished she wouldn't do. Couldn't she just leave well enough alone? Oh, hey, is it that internet? Our interweb friend you made? Are they all right? Fine. Snapped Dennis, and Lorelei gave a little shrug. If you want to talk about it. But Dennis gave a snort, and ran off. He hadn't meant to run, hadn't known he could run that fast. But the moment he had turned his back his shoulders had started to shake and his gut had felt heavier than it normally had, and he had felt like if he tried to talk to her he'd just end up sounding like the villain in K, K, B, D, T, and why did that have to come to mind right now? That was when Naki replied, at long last. Coming to rest under a large, tropical tree that had weathered the impossible cold with the resilience of ancient wood, Dennis felt his brick vibrate, and could swear it felt a little warmer than the normal, comfortable inferno glow. Maybe it was the sweat he had worked up running for about two minutes, but Lorelei was shouting something and he didn't feel quite as bad, now. She knew him after all. This was just what he did. Yeah, it was normal for him. Feeling more safe and secure, he opened the brick and was immediately greeted by. Behind his glasses, the Dark Lord's eyes grew and bugged out. Each letter was weirdly capitalized and spaced, as if Naki was having an incredibly hard time typing. 
YOUM on STER. ILLNEVERFORG 4EYOUFORMAK in GLITTLENACKYCRY. His eyes watered, and at first he thought it was a joke. Then the letters came, slowly, each one taking roughly 30 seconds to be typed. Dennis began to rearrange them in his mind as they came, mostly because he found himself unable to look away, his body shaking without truly understanding why. You monster! I'll never forgive you for making little Naki cry. I let her continue to talk with you because she doesn't have a lot of friends but I see now I was mistaken. I was going to take care of you myself, but that made her more sad, so you got lucky, this time. Who bullies a kid just because they can? She trusted you. She. The messages kept on coming, and finally, Dennis just stopped looking at the screen. He could hear the wind picking up, and for some reason it brought back that comfortable empty feeling. Everything would be all right. It didn't matter. As usual. Stowing it back where he kept all of his cool gear, Dennis sauntered back to camp, fixing his sunglasses so they looked as cool as they should. Lorelei smiled at his approach. She must have assumed the best, since his posture was as cool as it always was. Yes. Glad to see you worked out whatever was bothering you. I didn't want to say anything but, there are a few people I regret not talking to, when I had the chance. I made some fried, frozen squash, things. If you're hungry. He grunted nonchalantly, and grabbed one squeezing the frozen burnt vegetable until it nearly burst in his grasp. It felt good, and tasted better, and he ate greedily. Never had he had a more satisfying meal. Chapter End